We're going to be talking uh, today about just something that is one of our core values here as a church. Um, so you guys probably have heard this. You guys have probably maybe have had some kind of like understanding of what this is. Um, but we feel like this goes perfectly kind of in line with like what Pastor Ben was talking about a little bit too. Um, and this is just something that we all need um, to have a greater understanding of, a greater awareness of. Um, so we're going to be talking today about surrendering to the Holy Spirit. Um, as Christians, we have access to the greatest power ever known to man. Like, do you guys believe that? It is the greatest power is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The words that were spoken to create the earth, yep. the Holy Spirit, that is power. It spoke life into existence. It's the same power that we have mm -hmm. access to today. This power gives us authority. It gives us strength. It gives us wisdom. Everything that we need to be successful in life, whether in leadership or simply by leading our families, yep. comes by the power of and the strength and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So that is why it's one of our core values as a church to surrender to the Holy Spirit. It's something that we model our church after. We train our staff and our volunteers on. And most importantly, it's something that we want each and every person who comes to this church to get down into their hearts, to yield and to obey mm -hmm. and listen to the leading and the guiding voice of the Holy Spirit. So our core value statement is this, for our lives and leadership to reflect the life and mission of Jesus, we surrender to the person, baptism, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We seek the kingdom first by living in an ongoing personal relationship with the Holy Spirit and rely on his voice to teach and to edify us. See, Romans 8, 5 says this, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, Spirit. set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Guys, I just want to encourage you. Are you setting your mind on the things of the Spirit, or are you setting your mind on the things of the flesh? Replace maybe flesh with the things of the world right? That might be some popular language that we hear spoken now, like, right? Are you so consumed with the things of this world? Are you so consumed about the distractions around you? Or are your minds and your hearts set on the guiding and the leading voice of the Holy Spirit? So I want to encourage you guys with that. It's the adage, are you striving or are you abiding? Because when we strive, we are walking outside of the umbrella of grace, but when we abide, we are covered from the weathers of life. I don't know about you, but I would certainly rather walk in a surrendered life that is covered by God's grace and God's power and by God's anointing. Would you? Instead of striving and trying to work and trying to accomplish the things on your own outside of the umbrella of the protection of God's grace upon your lives. Man, when we surrender to the working of the Holy Spirit, when we surrender to his voice, we're actually protecting ourselves from walking outside of his grace, yep. from walking outside of the things that he has intended for our lives to be, for the things and the things that we might, or that we might encounter, that we might hear, the things that we might come through in life. The storms in life, we know that they're going to be there, right? We know that they're going to come. The Bible says that they're going to come. But man, when we are surrendered to the voice and the guiding leading of the Holy Spirit, man, we are under that protection of that umbrella and God's grace. God can lead us and direct us to those paths that, man, it might be a little rocky, but it might not be as rocky, right? It might not be as low of a valley, but man, there are some valleys that we have to go through. But guess what? Even in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because your rod and your staff, they comfort us, mm -hmm. right? He is there with us. He's walking through that with us. We just have to be attuned to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So, Mariah, would you go ahead and walk us a little bit through the practicals of what surrendering to the Holy Spirit looks like as a leader or maybe even in just like our personal lives? Yep. So I have three practical steps for us. But before I show us what those are, 
I want to get straight into the Word of God. This is Acts chapter 10, verse 19 through 20. Um, And really just the context of this story, we have Peter, and he gets this remarkable vision from the Lord. And the Lord shows him something super remarkable. And so what we're about to see is what Jesus is ultimately saying in this vision that he gives Peter is, hey, the gospel, salvation is not just for the Jews, it's actually for the Gentiles as well. And so here's Peter inside of Acts chapter 10. He's trying to kind of rack his brain of like, okay, what does this vision fully look like? And I want you to watch what God says to Peter and Peter's response to what God says to him. Watch this. It says, as Peter was in a deep thought, right, trying to figure out and interpret the vision, it says, the Spirit said to him. Everyone say, the Spirit said to him. The Spirit said to him. Okay, so we see right now the Holy Spirit speaks. And is Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. Yes. Okay, awesome. So we just got that in our minds. So the Spirit said to him, go downstairs now for three men are looking for you. Don't hesitate to go with them. Everyone say, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to go with them. Don't try to rack your brain, figure out, okay, why am I telling you to go downstairs that there's going to be three men? He's like, don't hesitate. Just go and listen to my voice. It says, then God even says, because I have set them. Everyone say, I have sent them. I have sent them. So God's telling them, hey, you can know it's me. I'm trustworthy. I've sent them. Peter went downstairs to the men and said, I believe I'm the one that you're looking for. What brings you here? And now if you continue to read in Acts chapter 10, we see that actually the Gentiles get presented the gospel. They receive salvation and they get baptized in the Holy Spirit. But for the first point of how practically can we surrender to the Holy Spirit, it's this. The Holy Spirit has something to say to you. Are you listening? You know, we just saw in this previous passage with Peter, what did God say? It says, the Spirit said to him, the same Spirit in Peter is the same Spirit that lives in you. And I know that God is not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. And so we see the Spirit talk to Peter, the Holy Spirit dwelling within him, spoke to him something specific. And so you can know with such confidence that the Spirit is speaking to you. Yep. He's not quiet for some people, but boy, he talks really loud and clear to some people. Mm. He's not a respecter of persons. We have to ask the question, wait a minute, are we listening? Are we in tune with the Holy Spirit? I love this one uh, podcast that I listened to. Her name was Mia Fields, and she was talking all about how God spoke to her in regarding to her future husband. And someone had said to her, you look for God in everything, like as if it was a bad thing. She said, sure do. Sure do do I look for God in everything. Sure do. He's speaking to me. He's talking to me. Do you know that the Holy Spirit actually wants to let you in on his thoughts, on his secrets, on his mysteries? He wants to let you in on that. And so sometimes we've developed this mindset that, you know, only the pastor can hear from the Spirit. Only back in the day, you know, when, when Peter was alive, did the Holy Spirit speak in such specifics. Can I tell you, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in such specifics. He wants to let you in, not only just in a ministry context, but even for your personal life. Mm-hmm. Um, there was this one time, I wasn't even planning on sharing this story, but, um, but there was this one time that my brother was doing something that he shouldn't have been doing. This was a, really a few years ago. He's married now, happily married, they're saved and all that good stuff. But um, he was doing something that he shouldn't. And in the middle of the night, my mom woke up and she got this dream of my brother like throwing up black stuff. Hmm. And she woke up like, whoa, what is that? And she heard in her spirit, he's chewing tobacco. Okay. All right. I'm going to sit on it. I'm going I'm to sit on it. I'm not going to just go and, and run and tell my son, the Lord told me that you're <laughs> chewing tobacco. And so he comes home this one day from football practice. And I remember I was sitting in in the family room. And he comes upstairs and he's like, I'm going to head to bed. My mom goes, come here. Let me smell your breath. The prompting of the Holy Spirit, right? The Spirit is detailed. He wants to talk concerning not just ministry life. And so she said, come here. I I, want to smell your breath. He's like, no. What are you talking about? Come on, you're ridiculous. Like just making her feel crazy. (laughs) She goes, let me smell your breath. She smells his breath, and she goes, you've been chewing tobacco. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Yada, yada, yada. (laughs) She goes, okay. 
few, few moments passed by. He ends up coming in her room that very night, crying. Mom, I've been chewing tobacco. How did you know? How did you know? She said, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he told me. Hmm. Amen. We can try to rack our brains and figure out, okay, this is the millionth mm. reason of why the Holy Spirit isn't active today and why he doesn't talk and why all the different things. This just goes to show the Spirit, the Holy Spirit who lives in you, he is concerned about everything concerning you. Everything. Mm -hmm. Not even just the people that you minister to, but even in your own personal life. So That's I want to ask you, do you have an expectation that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you about your kids, about your future kids, about your relationships, about your friendships, future husband, whatever it is? Do you believe and do you have an expectation that the God, the one who created the heavens and earth, his very spirit wants to speak to you Amen. concerning everything? Do you have good. anything you want to share on that topic? I think you're good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, number two is this. So one of my favorites, don't hesitate to obey his words. Delayed obedience mm. is disobedience. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Do not hesitate to obey his words. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So here's, here's God telling Peter while he's trying to interpret a dream. He says, hey, go downstairs. I have three <laughs> men that are going to meet you. I don't know about you, but I might have hesitated a little bit. Like, what do you mean there's three men outside who are Roman soldiers waiting for me, and they're, 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 they're here for me, right? Hmm. I want to encourage someone today that when we talk about surrendering to the Spirit of God, that means we give Him our yes before it makes any sense to us. Before we have any human logic attached to it, we give Him our yes, and we say, Holy Spirit, whatever you say, whatever you tell me to do, if you tell me to go here, if you tell me to say this, if you tell me to wait, if you tell me to stay, I'm going to do it. Why? Because delayed obedience is disobedience, and mm -hmm. I ultimately, I trust you. Yeah. There was this one time that um, we were actually on a missions trip uh, for um, Waymaker when we were in ministry school. And we were street evangelizing, and so we were going house to house and preaching the gospel, which if you want to get out of your comfort zone to preach the gospel, knock on some random people's <laughs> doors in a foreign country and say, hola, yeah. we have the gospel. You did that in America, and they go, shh, shh. <laughs> like, yeah. That's can, pretty much the response. You're not even going to get a response in America if you ring someone's yeah. doorbell. No. Um, so we're going house to house, and we were talking with these two ladies. I don't even know if you're with me, but... Um, there was one lady who was around late 30s to 40s, and I was just talking with them, and the Holy Spirit just dropped in my heart, tell her that I, I have a husband for her. And I'm like, oh, well, talk about just really like a big icebreaker is just <laughs> telling someone that I literally just met that God has a husband for them. And the first thing that came to my mind, because we, we lean on our own understanding, is, God, what, what if she is married? And I tell her this, and... and why would, I, why would I share this? Because I'm going to look like an idiot if I tell this woman, God has a husband for you, and she looks like she's in her 40s, so like clearly she would already be married. And so here I am like in my mind just like battling, like I should say it. No, I shouldn't say it. Yes, I should, you know what I mean? All the different things. And so I had to come to terms. I can't hesitate anymore. Do I trust that I hear your voice or do I not? And so I just went on a whim. And I looked at the translator, and I said, can you ask her if, if she's married right now? And she, so he asked, and she said no. And I was like, well, here we go. And so I, I looked at the translator and told, her, told him everything that I had felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And the moment that the translator told, told her that God had a husband for her and, and, and the Holy Spirit wanted her to know that, tears just began to stream down her face. Wow. But that's the exact word at the exact moment that she needed because all her life she just felt like she was a lost cause. She would never be able to settle down, get married because of her past. And here the Lord saw her in that very moment. And I had a choice. Was I going to hesitate on the word that God gave me because it didn't make sense in human logic and I was scared and I was afraid? Or was I going to say, Holy Spirit, wait a minute. I'm not going to hesitate one more second because when you tell me to go, I'm going to go. When you tell me to say something, I'm going to say it. The biggest why attach this, why should we not hesitate, it's this. I was stewarding a word for his most prized possession, which was people. Mm -hmm. When you hesitate to share something that the Holy Spirit speaks to you, do you know what you're doing? You're actually hindering somebody 
from receiving something that God has for him yeah. or her. And so you have to make up in your mind when the Holy Spirit tells you something, because you hear from him, yes. same spirit that lived in Peter, the same spirit that lives in Pastor John Nuzo is the same spirit that lives in you. Are you going to hesitate and try to make up human logic with it? Hmm. Number three, and this is our last one. Rest in knowing that the Holy Spirit is trustworthy. His yeah. track record is perfect. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when we hesitate, it's because we don't trust him. Yeah. When we try to figure it out ourselves, it's like, well, God, you're telling me to do this, but I mean, the finances aren't there. But God, you're, you're telling me to, to go here, but you know, that's not what everybody else is doing. Or God, you're telling me to say this, but I'm scared. And, 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 and not, not everybody here has that kind of boldness. We try to rack our brain and talk ourselves out of why we shouldn't do what God spoke to us. But I came to remind someone that his track record is perfect. Yeah. We're talking about the great I am. The one who spoke the world into existence. The one who breathed breath into your being. The one who sits on the throne right now and tw 24 elders fall on their face and worship him. Okay. The one who said he would defeat death, hell, and the grave, and he did. His track record is perfect. Mm -hmm. When he speaks to you, know that that's the one who is speaking to you as well. You can trust him when he speaks. I love Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not some of your heart. Not mm, maybe just a tiny bit of your heart. It says, with all your heart. And do not lean on what? Understanding. Your own understanding. Why does it tell you not to lean on your own understanding? Because your understanding and your ways are going to fail you every single time. He says, don't lean on your own understanding. But what? In all your ways. All your ways, no matter where you are, no matter who you're with, no matter where you're seated. He says, in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge, Acknowledge him, him and he will you. direct your path. Come on. It's so simple. Yet we sit here and we try to figure out why God doesn't speak to us, why the answer is no, why we shouldn't be able to trust him with our whole entire life, every aspect of our life, even when it comes to ministry. And so I want to encourage you today, lean on him. Acknowledge that he speaks to you. Mm -hmm. Because when you walk into whatever area of ministry that you're in, even in your home life, but even in ministry, don't just rely on the pastor or whoever to, to hear a word from God. I want, and I'm sure this is Adam's heart as well, when we walk into Echo or we walk into Sozo, I want a group of leaders to be so sensitive to the voice of God. We might miss some cues. We might miss some structured things. That's okay. I would rather you miss some structured things in a schedule than miss his voice. Yeah. I'd rather you be so consumed with what he's saying in that moment than you being so consumed with the details. Now, yes, we have to make sure the service runs good. I'm not saying that. But I want you to be so concerned with him first. Because if we miss that, then we're actually just having a fun service mm -hmm. instead of acknowledging the one that we're here for. That's good. And his concern is people. And so I want to encourage you with, with that, walking that out. Adam, do you have any last minute thoughts for us? Yeah, I just kind of want to like, so your point's about delayed obedience is mm -hmm. disobedience and it takes the trust factor, right? Like that is so important. And it does, it takes that trusting in like the Holy Spirit, knowing, do we know God's character? Mm -hmm. Do we know his character that whenever he speaks to us, it's with good intentions, mm -hmm. right? It's to set us up for success, not for failure, mm -hmm. right? So I look at the, like the story of, of Jonah, right? And that whole story of like how, you know, he was in this conversation going back and forth with God and God told him to go and he didn't go. And then he went and then he was in the, the belly of a whale, right? And it's like, if Jonah would have just went on the first call, would that have happened? I don't know, right? But it's like just looking at this whole thing, right? We have to trust that when the voice of God speaks to us, mm -hmm. we can act upon it because his intentions are good. Yep. They're to succeed. They're to 
uh, elevate the people around us or to elevate ourselves into a position that he wants to use us mm -hmm. for. So we have to have that level of trust, just knowing that I know God's character. Mm -hmm. I know the words that he's spoken over me. I know the words that he speaks over other people. I know the ways that he has acted before because he is the same yesterday, today, yep. and forevermore that his character has not changed. Yep. So the things that he's done for people in the past, he wants to do for you. He wants to use you in those same exact ways. It takes that level of trust. Mm -hmm. And so I want to leave you guys with a, a go and do. Okay, so a go and do, a little activation step for you. Now, maybe this is something that you guys have a part of your, your regular routine, your daily lives. Maybe it's not, and maybe this is something for you guys to implement. Or maybe it's just something for you guys to be a little bit more intentional with if it is something that you guys do. I want you guys to go this week with the challenge of I want you to ask God, God, give me something specific today that you need me to do. Lord, what is it today that you need me to do? Lord, who is it today that you need me to reach? Who is it that you need me to encourage? Lord, what is it that you need me to see? Who's the person that I need to see today? If you do that, maybe once this week, and then the next week you encourage yourself, okay, I'm going to try doing this twice. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you start building up that routine of you're just making your awareness more alert. Right? You're putting more of a focus on, okay, Lord, I'm going to stop. Lord, right now I'm going to ask you, Lord, what is it today that you need me to do? Mm -hmm. Lord, how can I put your kingdom first right now in my life instead of putting myself first right now? Lord, who's the person that you want to highlight mm -hmm. to me today? Who's the one that needs your, your love today? Mm -hmm. Who's the one that needs that encouragement? Who's on the verge of suicide that right now I can speak into their life, I can show them the love of Jesus, and their life will be forever changed? Guys, that's how he wants to use mm -hmm. us every single day. Mm -hmm. Whether that's in your work life, right, out in the secular world, whether that's at the gas station, whether that's at the grocery store, Whatever your life looks like, it's not contained to just here mm -hmm. in the church. We are so much bigger. We're, so, we're called to get outside of these four walls to bring the hope to the world that mm -hmm. needs it. Mm -hmm. It's the hope of Jesus. Mm -hmm. God wants to use us to reach people. Mm -hmm. But just like Mariah said, too, it's like, man, we can be attentive to the Holy Spirit, too, when we're here and when we're in a service. There's students that need you. Mm -hmm. There's leaders around you that need you yep. to be obedient to the Holy Spirit so that you can be his mouthpiece and speak life into them. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you guys to just have that, have that intentionality. Have that level of just being aware. Lord, what is it that today you want to do? Mm -hmm. I just feel it strong in my heart that I feel like there's people in this room where the Lord has spoken something to you and you did have delayed obedience. And maybe you're still questioning it. Maybe you're still like, okay, God, but in the logical sense, this still doesn't make sense. And so you haven't given him your yes because it doesn't fully add up. That's the beauty of repentance mm -hmm. is just turning around and saying, you know what? I messed up. I, I, I did have disobedience towards you. I didn't go when you told me to go. Or I, I have a bad attitude when you told me to stay and then I don't want to stay. And so, even though delayed obedience is disobedience, that's the beauty of repentance, is because you could just turn around and his arms are still open wide and he's like, this promise still stands for you. This is still yours. You could still have it. And so I believe that there's people here today where the Lord has spoken something to you. And maybe it got a little bit fuzzy. Maybe it's kind of on the bookshelf and you just forgot about it. Reopen that up with the Lord mm -hmm. and ask him, God, you spoke this to me a while back, and I kind of just brushed it away. What do you want me to do with this now? And talk with him about it. He's going to speak to you again. He's going to continue to talk to you. I love that scripture. It says when you're faithful with little, you can be faithful with much. Mm -hmm. And so when God speaks to you and you just disregard it, do you think that he's going to continue to, to give you those big like words and those big statements? Mm -hmm. You're ignoring them, right? And so revisit that with God and say, God, I repent of that. 
I, I turn back to you. I, I, I want to revisit what you had spoken to me, what you had shared with me. I love that about the Lord is he just always reroutes, reroutes, reroutes. There's not a plan B with God. There's always a plan A. And that's the beauty of a GPS is it just brings you back to plan A's destination. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Can you pray for us? Absolutely. For sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your spirit. Lord, we thank you right now, Father, that, Lord, as we are making ourselves more aware to you, Lord, to your voice and to your leading, Father, Lord, that you speak to us. And, Father, that we can hear your voice. Lord, that we can eliminate the distractions around us, all the different voices, Father, that we might hear, all the different things that, Father, might want to try to uh, uh, grab our attention, Lord. Lord, we can put those things on the shelf and say, Lord, we focus in on you today. And, Lord, every day of our lives, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, that your voice, Father, is known to us. Lord, that we can hear that still, small voice, that small whisper, Lord, like it's a loud megaphone. Lord, we thank you mm -hmm. right now, Lord, Lord, that as our spirits, Father, become more, Father, attentive to you, Lord, that you're going to use us and lead us, Father, to do great things, to reach people, Father, to make an impact in your kingdom. Father, we thank you right now, Lord, that as we surrender, Father, to the Holy Spirit, Lord, that our lives, they increase. Lord, we put ourselves at your feet, and we just thank you, Lord, Lord, for the things that you want to do in and through each and every person that's here in this room. Lord, you've all called us according to your purpose, and Lord, we thank you for this. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you guys. Thanks, guys.